This is Neustadt in Saxon. It's a town approximately 50 kilometers from the center of Dresden to the southeast. It's only two kilometers from the border with the Czech Republic, or Czechia as I'm now trying to call it. This is the main square. Quite an attractive main square, I think you'd agree. Unusual church over there. And as you can see, it's 7.30 in the morning. Fortunately we've got the cleaning staff out so that's going to have this uh, pneumatic type uh, noise in the background. Now this place has got a very much a feeling of East Germany about it still and that's despite the fact that uh, DDR ceased to exist 30 years ago. You can see it in the uh, way the houses look uh, still and I think this the general appearance. So anybody's into sort of DDR nostalgia, this would be the sort of place to come to. For example, when you walk around Dresden, uh, as as an example, you, you don't really get the feeling of it there. Here, it's very strong. And I was in Pirna, which is not so far from here, two days ago, and they don't feel it at, at all, in my opinion. Anyway, so it's a sort of a bit of a backwater. It was a town which had, uh, like many uh, within the socialist command economy, uh, with one employer of any consequence, and that employer made threshing machines, and that employer obviously went bankrupt in the 1990s. Uh, it was a couple of attempts to, to save it. First of all, there was a company making similar equipment. Then there was an attempt by uh, a tractor manufacturer case came here, uh, but now there are motorhomes are manufactured there, and it is one of the most, if not the most, advanced motorhome manufacturing plant in Europe, if not in the world. So um, that is something uh, very uh, positive, and uh, what I saw yesterday. Uh, on my visit, I, I was really very impressed. Of, uh, utterly clear uh, line. Anyway, you can see that in films about that. This thing I find quite curious. Elektra Friedrich August I of Saxony had a number of distance columns put up in the first half of the 18th century in his electorate. The distance pillar in Neustadt has been moved, although not very far, and it's almost in its original location on the east side of the town hall on the market square, and bears the date 1729. Until 1888 it stood in front of the town hall, and was then removed to a park in front of the imperial post office. In 1929 it returned to the marketplace. It has been repaired and restored. The distance information is given to many surrounding cities using the old form of measurement, which is called Wegstunden. And one Wegstunden is 7,531 meters. Um, I was thinking about this last night, and I remembered a, a French film called uh, La Nuit de Varennes, which is meant to take place uh, when the French king tries to escape from Paris. Okay, it's the end of the 18th century. It's uh, uh, more than 60 years uh, after this this was put up, but it sort of reminded me of the way the uh, stagecoaches then uh, ran. Neustadt, a town in the southeast of Germany, is nestled in the Neustadter Valley between the ridges of the Hofwald and the Ungerberg, only a couple of kilometers from the Czech border. The valley lies between the Lusitanian Highlands and the Elbe Sandstone Mountains, and is known for the spring snowflakes that grow here. Neustadt was first mentioned in 1333 in connection with gold mining. The founders of the town were miners. Gold has never been found here despite numerous attempts to find it. Nonetheless, the town continued to grow as it was an important crossroads of two trade routes. The salt road from Halle in Saal to Prague and the pilgrim road from Bautzen to the Bohemian pilgrimage town of Mariaschen, which is today called Bohusudov. The first church, the Hospital Kirche, probably stood on the former pilgrim road even before the founding of the town at the Hospitalstrasse. Soon after the founding of the town, the Jakob Kirche was built, either named after St. James or because it stood on the medieval 
St. James's Way. Initially, the city belonged to the Kingdom of Bohemia, becoming part of Saxony in 1451. Historically, industries have included metalworking, tractor production, and during World War II, 88mm anti-aircraft weapons. In the DDR, Neustadt was a center of agricultural machinery production, and because of this, the population doubled from 1948 to 1984. Other industries included knife and artificial flower production. Today, the most important local business in, is Capron, which makes recreational British vehicles on the site of the former anti-aircraft and later agricultural implements factory. Unemployment currently stands at around 10% and this is the best figure since the early 1990s. You can see the Capron factory in another film. So the chemists was founded in 1709, you see it up there. We've got the date of the 9th of May 1945. Oh, it was burnt down. And on the 9th of May 1781, Dr. Friedrich Adolf August Struve was born. On the 20th of December 1992, um, I was heading towards Poland in my then new car and I took the wrong turning on the Berlin Ring you know, and anyway I realised I was going the wrong way on the motorway and I decided to cut across uh, and um, this was uh, the area north of Berlin and then I was really very, what I saw I thought was fascinating, I thought it was a sign of the old DDR and I promising myself since then, the last 26 years, to do actually a tour around. But having said it's got a DDR feeling to it, at the same time, it's not, um, it's not as it was then. I was even I had friends in Spain who were uh, somewhat left-leaning towards, uh, sympathetic towards communism. I said to them at the time, so, well, why don't we just go together? And so, you know, what with me being uh, the other way inclined, uh, sort of extremely anti-communist. This is the town hall, which was built in 1674, rebuilt in uh, the 19th and 20th centuries. There's also a Heimat Museum, which shows something of how people lived here in bygone times. The bike tracks here are very well marked, although it's a little bit tough here for cyclists. It's up and down a great deal. As I was driving here from Piena yesterday, I very much got the impression of not being in Germany. If I had to say what country was I in at that moment, I would have said I was in Slovakia. Very hilly, pre-mountainous as I would call it. Um, but the, uh, the town as well, it didn't really look uh, as German uh, towns uh, look, or villages look, I should say. Neustadt's oldest building is the vicarage, built in 1616 with its Renaissance style entrance portal and its exposed Franconian framework. The Catholic Church, named after St. Gertrude, was built from 1927 to 1928. The tallest building in Neustadt is the tower of the Neo-Gothic style Protestant St. Jacob's Church. The church was first mentioned in 1346. Since then, there have been several church buildings made of wood and later also of stone, some of which were very dilapidated or no longer fit the requirements of a growing town. The oldest surviving part of the church is the 16th century chancel. The tower with its clock can be seen from the surrounding hills and therefore anybody who had good eyesight could always read the exact time, 
even at a time when people did not own their own wristwatch or have a mobile phone as things are now. In addition to church services, numerous concerts are held in the church. That sound is the sound of a printer. Having been a publisher myself, I recognise it. So the church originally uh, dates back 1346, but it rebuilt in neo-gothical style in 1883 to 1884. At the beginning of May 1945, some of Neustadt's inhabitants decided to hand over their town, which had no regular troops, to the advancing Red Army and Second Polish Army. The capitulation was offered by hoisting white flags. Nonetheless, a die-hard Hitler Youth leader thought differently. He had entrenched himself in the school with some Hitler Youth boys and opened fire on the approaching Soviet and Polish armies. Fire was met with fire, including heavy weapons which damaged a great deal of the town and caused massive conflagrations. Half of the buildings around the market square were destroyed. Only the intervention of the Catholic and Protestant pastors who were able to plead with the Soviet commander spared the rest of the town. The Catholic priest spoke Sorbian, which is similar enough to Polish and Russian to be understandable, and thus saved the town from complete destruction. Church bell over there. A large part of this town's got these cobbled streets. Here's the summit of the printer, which was built in 1890, rebuilt in 1949. Julius Misbach. guest house clearly been here for I would have thought a couple hundred years something like that well the roof is new an old name I just don't quite understand what it means Fuchs Fox a bow a construction maybe the foxes are building the houses which are next to this and there we see a Star of David, which I believe uh, is meant to signify that the excise duty has not been paid on the wine or was excise free. That is, as I understand it, that's what I learned uh, at um, Lindau when I, was a, in, when I was there last year. The big Star of David over a, a tavern there. Just still got streets named after Karl Marx and Rosa Luxemburg. And after this walk, I'm now heading back to get pick up my van and then clear off. The reason for which is the, I've been set up with an appointment at the National Park and I'm on my way there now. Unfortunately, my internet uh, isn't working and I have to stand in front of the bank to get a message. But 
I think actually I filmed just about everything of interest. Yeah. At least for me, I'll probably miss something, but. Uh, So now I'm back to where I left my van. Former factory uh, in communist times and pre-communist times as well. But it's now being extended. Work's going on it. Here you have the car park being extended. But also the factory itself is being extended. And there's my van up there at the back. <laughs> 